Welcome to the Apps and Collaboration track of the 6.5 Summit. I'm Fred McClymans of Futurum Research, and on behalf of our team and the team at More Insights and Strategy, thanks for joining us here today. We're pleased to present Jordan Owens, Vice President of Architecture at PECSIP, as our keynote speaker in this track. Jordan and his team are focused on bringing scalable cloud-native video conferencing solutions to the market, and they believe that there's a strong need for systems that are high quality, highly interoperable, and flexible enough to support multiple clouds and hybrid operating environments. Let's join Jordan as he outlines how smart technology will help simplify and shape the future of meetings and collaboration ahead. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world and what time you're watching this broadcast. My name is Jordan Owens and I am the VP of Architecture at Pexit. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about meetings of the future and how AI and, and really just smart technology can enable a simplification of the collaboration story as we move forward. So I'm going to spend a few minutes here talking about uh, just how collaboration is going to evolve and what collaboration is really going to look like in the future. But in order to really understand where we're going, it's extremely important that we understand where we are and why we want to take these steps as we move forward. Today's apps are really way too complicated. They are built around the technology and they force users to adapt to the way that the app wants to work rather than the app itself adjusting to the way that users want to work. We support things like customization in today's apps. We support ex extending capabilities down to the individual end users, but we do so by pushing out additional levels of complexity, giving users the the capability through buttons or knobs or additional touch points that they have within the, not, within the app itself. In short, we're really shifting that complexity back to the end user, which is really where it should lie. The app of the future needs to be a much more simplistic environment. The meeting of the future needs to be one where end users focus on the meeting itself rather than on the complexity around that environment. So what is the meeting of the future? To be super, super candid, the meeting of the future is just a meeting, but that meeting will be a video meeting. Every meeting as we move forward will be a video meeting. As we all start to think about what we want to do in the future, about returning to the office, about returning to work, about returning to some sense of normalcy, the reality is that all meetings will include some form of video conferencing. They will be more complex though. They will include people that are attending in person. They will include people that are attending virtually. They'll need to support users that are joining from a video conferencing endpoint or, or joining from a web browser, or joining from a mobile device or a tablet or any one of a number of different things that a user may need to, to leverage in order to connect. And fundamentally, they must incorporate third-party tools. They must incorporate other ways to collaborate or to bring in information so that the meeting can be more fruitful as we go forward. In short, meetings have never been so complicated. Meetings have never been so complex than where they are right now, which means that we as a technology, we as a manufacturer, we as an industry really need to shift our focus to the user. We need to start paying attention to the user, what the user needs. So who is the user? Fundamentally, the user is one of two people. They're the end user. They're the people in finance, the people in HR, the people in IT, the people in sales, the people in sales engineering, the, the, the user of the meeting, the attendee of the meeting, the host of the meeting. They're the people that need to schedule, that need to conduct, that need to interact directly within that meeting itself. But we also shouldn't forget about the administrative user, the person that actually sets up and manages and supports and sustains the video conferencing technology itself, that sustains the, the environment that the users ultimately want to consume. And we shouldn't forget their role within this conversation. We shouldn't forget their value within this conversation as well. So what's the point of all of this? Why, why do we bring all of this up? Why do we have this talk track around users or talk track around complexity or talk track around access? 
Because the reality is that organizations are going to be and are already today more diverse than they ever have been. And as a result, we need the tools themselves to adapt to that complexity. We need the tools themselves to enable that diversity, not the other way around. We need to shift the focus away from what are the buttons and the knobs and the adjustments that we want to extend to the user and instead think about it from how do the tools themselves adapt to what the user needs at the right time, providing the right controls in the right way and do so in a very transparent manner so that users themselves don't have to think about. And in order to really think about that, we have to think about how these tools themselves interact with the users and what are the stages of this meeting as we go forward. We can affect this real change by looking at meeting stages. We can look at stages in terms of before the meeting and how do we actually invoke that meeting. We can look at it in terms of the meeting itself, the stage in which the user actually consumes the technology and leverages the technology within that environment. And then we can look at how we want to return that user from the meeting back to the work that they need to do. So let's start by thinking about the world from the pre-meeting architecture. How is the meeting of the future going to enable the user to quickly and easily get out of the work that they're doing into the meeting and then start to conduct that meeting? And the first thing we need to do is we need to enable that end user to create the meeting in the most efficient way. Today, apps force you into an incredibly complex environment in order to create that meeting. I have to take, I have to take a step back and I have to say, okay, hold on a second. I now need to create a meeting. So I'm going to step out of my work. I'm now going to open up my email. So to create, an, a, 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 create a meeting, I have to go into my email. And then I'm going to click into the calendaring button. And then I'm going to start a new calendaring invitation. And then I'm going to scroll right or scroll left to find the right meeting app because we as an organization have multiple meeting apps and I'm going to choose the right app and then, okay, hold on. Now I need to invite the right people. And now, okay, hold on. I want to think about the room and I have to find the right room, which might be easy for where I sit. And, but what happens if I have people that are remote? It, it, way too complicated, way too hard. Users should be able to create and launch a meeting from whatever tool that they are using whatever app that they happen to be using in order to conduct that environment. And then they should be able to launch into that meeting from within that app as well. Maybe I'm working on a document or a presentation, or maybe I'm just simply working on a spreadsheet to do cost modeling or whatever it is that I happen to be doing. Why can't I launch into that app, into the meeting from within that tool and schedule it? I also need to think about how can I easily and efficiently escalate calls from maybe a point to point call into a multi point call. So maybe I'm in a meeting with my boss and, and my boss thinks about how we need to bring in uh, a peer from the channels team or somebody from marketing or whatever the case may be. So, so they then add that person into the meeting. Well, maybe I want to bring in a team member as well so that we can look at a very specific account or a very specific opportunity that we're working or maybe I need to bring in somebody from IT because something's not working quite right so I add those individuals into that meeting and maybe they then need to bring in an administrator of a different tool because again it, it the meeting itself continues to escalate we often find ourselves in conversations that very quickly morph from what we have as an intended conversation into a much more in-depth, much more far-reaching conversation with multiple people from multiple de departments within my organization, and sometimes people even outside my organization. We should be able to escalate that call in a very elegant way to bring in additional people from additional departments without having to worry about How's the tool going to adapt to that? The tool itself should figure that out and should bring everybody into that central conversation on the fly. And then when you look at joining that meeting that I've created, it should be as simple as pushing a single button or quite frankly, in today's, in today's environment, not even pushing a single button and just automatically joining into that meeting. It should be that, simplis uh, that simplistic. So how can AI impact this behavior? How can AI make creation of the meeting, make escalation of that meeting, and make joining that meeting 
much easier, it can do so in a number of different ways. First and foremost, it can abstract the technology from the end user. The end user should never know, nor should they care what has to happen behind the scenes in order to make all of this work. They should just know that it works. They should just know that I can schedule a meeting from within my chat application, or I can leverage this other tool from within that, uh, within Microsoft Word, or whatever the case may be. I should just very quickly and very easily be able to get into that meeting experience. AI should then bring all of the other dependencies that I have into that same experience as well. Maybe I want to bring in agenda items, or maybe I want to bring in notes from previous meetings, or maybe I've been working on, on a whiteboard and I need to bring in that brainstorming session directly into that meeting. It should enable all of that to be brought into that conversation as well. From a support perspective, this is really where we have a long way to go as an industry. How do we allow the user to support themselves in a much better way? How do we identify the possible faults or the possible problems that users will run into as they go and join into that meeting? Think about it from the perspective of the app should be able to identify, hey, you, the user, have multiple cameras on your device. This is the camera where I actually see a face, where I actually detect a human being. I'm going to automatically invoke that camera. Or this is the microphone where I'm hearing the most amount of audio. How do I enable that to work the right way? Apps themselves should proactively solve problems so we don't always have to pick up the phone and call IT support for that type of capability. If we now shift the conversation into the meeting, AI is going to be an empowering technology within the meeting. We're going to have technologies that enable things like facial recognition and auto framing of images. We're going to have ways that we can bring forward the individual and allow the background to disappear into the background so that it becomes a supporting detail, but it doesn't take away from the focus on the individual. How do we mimic lighting? How do we allow the human to pop out so we can make sure that we're focusing on that individual, but do so without being gimmicky, without being fake, without making it look like we're employing some type of technology behind the scenes. This should all just happen automatically within the meeting. In addition, as that meeting progresses, AI will enable me, the individual, to have access to other tools as well. Think about it on as we collaborate within a meeting, I should be able to bring in whatever I need to collaborate within that meeting without having to think about it. And those shouldn't necessarily be new tools or new technologies. What if I want to leverage just a $20 whiteboard that's hanging on my wall? What if I want to show you notes that I've been taking within my notebook? All of the tools today try to replace those items to make it easier. The tools of tomorrow will allow me to use whatever tools I want, whatever tools are most comfortable to me within the meeting that I, uh, that I need. And finally, when you look at it from conducting that meeting, the tools of tomorrow will allow me to interact with people that aren't in that meeting on the fly. For example, maybe I'm running into back-to-back -back meetings and this one meeting is running late. I should be able to send a quick message into the other meeting to alert all of the attendees within that back-to-back -back meeting that I'm running late. I'll be there, hang tight, give me a couple of minutes as I run late. And I should be able to do so with the click of a button within my current meeting without having to think about that. When I look at getting out of the meeting and returning to work, the meeting of the future will enable me to very quickly and very easily switch back to work as I leave out of that meeting. If you think about it from today's perspective, as I leave into the meeting, I have to stop and I have to think, okay, where was I before I went into that meeting? And I almost have to relearn the work that I've been conducting. The meeting of tomorrow will immediately return me contextually back into the work and remind me where I was. It will allow me to reduce the amount of friction that I have with getting back to work as I leave out of that meeting. It will bridge the gap between where I was and where I am now, giving me all of the information that I need to be able to conduct my work going forward. Going forward, excuse me. It'll bring forward notes that I've taken. It'll bring forward contextual clues. It'll bring forward other tools that I need in order to actually return back to work. 
And it will also automatically log all of the conversation that I had within that meeting so that I don't forget my follow-up items or my action items as I do get back to work. It'll make sure that I stay on task and that I stay on point as I go forward. But all of this AI, all of this capability will be done so with privacy in mind. A user, a user should never have to worry about do they trust the technology, about do they trust the partners with whom they work, about do they trust the tools that they want to leverage. Privacy will be built into the meeting of the future. It'll use modern authorization technologies instead of some of the rudimentary technologies that we have today. Things like pins are way too hard, way too complex, and to be candid, they don't really give you that level of in-depth security that I'm looking for. The tool should understand who I am and what rights I have and what access I have and what access I need in order to be able to conduct my job, and it will automatically give me that access without creating other points of friction or other challenges to be able to get into that meeting. It'll give me control and monitoring around where my data sits and who has access to my data and what they can do with that access, what reports they can run, what information they can get, they can gather. It will give me the ability to leverage independent certifications for the partners with whom I work. It will allow me to validate the security profile that those partners give to me. It will give, it will empower me, the end user, to trust but verify that the people with whom I work, that the partners who I, who I choose, will be doing exactly what they say they do as we move forward. In short, and to wrap this whole thing up, every meeting that we have going forward will be a video meeting. Every meeting that we have going forward will be an incredibly complex video meeting, but I as the end user will leverage AI to absolve that, tech, that complexity, will leverage technology, but technology will not be the focus. The meeting itself will be the focus. Apps will be simplified. They'll have fewer buttons. They'll have familiar buttons. They'll have familiar gestures and controls that allow me as the end user to leverage the right capability and the right functionality at the right time without having to think about it. AI will be brought into that meeting and it will be used to enhance my meeting experience, not compromise it, but it will do so in a very simplistic way without forcing the focus on technology, without forcing technology to come to the forefront, it will be an enabler to allow me to focus on the meeting itself. And that meeting will be leveraging the most up-to-date, the most modern privacy and security technologies to make sure that I feel comfortable using technology as I go forward. It will empower me, the end user, to conduct much better, much more profound, and much more secure meetings as I go forward but we'll make sure that the focus is on the meeting itself. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Jordan Owens. I'm the VP of Architecture for PECSIP. Uh, please connect with us and let us know whatever we can do to help out. And I look forward to interacting with you in the future. Have a great day.